Welcome back everyone. This is Brian with Faith on Fire. I want to just get a video out today considering it's the Friday coming before uh, Resurrection Sunday. Many people recognize this and call this particular day Good Friday, the day Jesus was crucified for our sins, the sins of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world all led up to this particular day. Um, now, I want to talk about Barabbas and his role in this, the one who was set free, right? Uh, I want to talk about the two thieves on the cross. I, I think that'll be very, both, uh, what I'm going to tell you about both uh, is going to be interesting, I think, to you. Um, and, and insightful and hopefully edifying to the body of Christ. So, um, but that's not all I want to talk about today. Real quick. Now, it's not going to be a very long video, I don't think. But nevertheless, I'm going to talk about Barabbas, the two thieves on the cross. And I also want to talk about um, another item. And, th and this has to do with, in, I don't know, ever since the war in Israel started, I've done a few videos where I talk about Israel and my support for Israel. Always gets some backlash from people who... Uh, are Christians, no doubt about that in my mind, but they certainly have a view that's different from mine about Israel as opposed to the role of the church and the church, the body of Christ, what I call the big C church, right? Believers. Um, there's a lot of unbelievers. Obviously, in Israel, there always has been, uh, but there's always been a remnant of true believers, as there is today. I know some personally with the tremendous ministries in Israel evangelizing. The interesting thing is a lot of the Jews in Israel really do have animosity towards the believing Jews or what we would call Messianic Jews. And and they um, they get persecuted, no question about it. Um, and when I hear them speak about their view of their fellow Jews, it's the complete opposite. It's really a picture of Christ. They love their fellow Jews, even though that they persecute them and ridicule and mock them for being believers in Jesus, may even call them traitors and so forth. I mean, this is the kind of thing that the Apostle Paul faced when he converted from being a Pharisee Saul to the Apostle Paul from the religious leaders and so forth. But a lot of like everyday folks in, in Israel that are Jewish literally seem to hate the believing Jews, and yet they extend nothing but love and grace and more mercy towards their fellow Jews, all in the hopes that they will become believers as they stand on the Word of God and teach them so forth. But there are those who, who are Christians around the world, and certainly here in America, that have a tremendous animosity, it seems, anti-Semitism, frankly, if you ask me. But, um, you know, I don't necessarily want to go that far. But nevertheless, they, they write comments to me that, you know, the church, they, they believe in uh, replacement theology, that the church replaces Israel. God's done with Israel because they rejected Christ and crucified him. And I want to talk about that in particular. We can talk about replacement theology another time, why I think it's not true. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, um, uh, you know, this is important to understand. Let me start off with this before I get to Barabbas and I get to the two thieves. There are those who seem to blame the Jews for having crucified Christ as if they are literally to blame. Like, that's why they're angry at them. Like, they crucified my Savior, right? Now, that's just, a, it's, an, it's, it's not like, that's not her heretical or some kind of blasphemous thing to say that. But understand, it's wrong. It is absolutely 100% wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now with 100% certainty that there is somebody to blame for having crucified Jesus Christ. Right? And if you really want to know who that is, all you got to do is go look in the mirror. And I'm not talking about you who may be watching me right now alone. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about everyone else who's watching and everyone else who may hear this message. Just go look in the mirror and you'll see the person you can get angry at and say, this person's sin is why Jesus came into the world to redeem us by giving his life up freely and dying on that cross, shedding his blood, being buried, but then he rose from the dead. And we're coming up to Resurrection Sunday. Many, many call it Easter. Some people don't like that. But, you know, Resurrection Sunday is fine with me, And you know, if you want to know my view. But anyway, so we are to blame because the Bible tells us that everyone is a sinner. And it just takes one sin. And you cannot redeem yourself. You can't save yourself. As I said in the last video, um, none of us have the ability to conquer sin and death on our own behalf. There's a lot of people out there that preach a false gospel of works. They add it to faith. and Or they though they start with faith and then they add works. They backload it. Like once you have faith in Christ, you're saved. But you got to then have the works or you're not saved. That's nonsense, right? You got to have works first. It's a coupled with the faith. Some, some teach, you know. And I don't want to go into that. I've already done videos on that. But no, no salvation is by 
faith alone. It's by grace through faith. And that faith is in Jesus Christ and the finished work that he did, not the work we do. And it is through believing on him that we are saved. The Bible says that over and over again. I won't go into that. I've done that in other videos. But we're talking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ here. How he freely laid his life down for all of us. And then he had the power and authority to take it back up again. And he was risen on this upcoming Easter day or Resurrection Sunday, as I prefer. Right? But, you know, trying to talk to everyone here. Anyway, so... Now let me tell you about Barabbas, and then I'll talk about the two thieves on the cross, and then we'll call it a day, right? Barabbas, once again, this is another very interesting story where Pontius Pilate is speaking to the crowd, and he has got a hardened criminal, Barabbas, who is going to be crucified. And then he has Jesus Christ, and he has already found Jesus Christ to be innocent, and he declares he's an innocent man. He finds no fault in him whatsoever. But he gives the people a choice. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to see set free? And the crowd cheers on that they want Barabbas and they want to, they want to see Jesus crucified. And I'm here to tell you once again that it's very easy for us as Christians to have some animosity towards Barabbas. And be like, that dirty, no good son of a, you know, he got away with murder. You know, and Jesus died in his place. We are Barabbas. Okay. That is the story. That's the lesson learned. Every one of us should be the one who pays for our own sins as Barabbas should have. But Jesus took his place and Jesus took our place on the cross. Each and every one of us individually. God knows everything. Jesus is God. God knows when he's, uh, Jesus knows on the cross, each and every one, not like some big collective, I'm just dying for the whole world. No, no, he knows he's dying for you individually and he's seeking a personal relationship with you that you would come to faith and believe on him, believe that he did that for you. And so we are Barabbas. That's why it's so individualized between Barabbas and Jesus. Just put yourself in the place of Barabbas and recognize Jesus just took my punishment and I'm going free. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, now we've got... The two thieves on the cross. Now, I want to tell you about this now. This is very interesting, too. We can learn a lesson here, too. There's lots of lessons here. Of course, we can talk about the two thieves. But one of the thieves was a, a, a mocking, unbelieving criminal, right? The other thief was a, a, a criminal who recognized he deserved what he was getting. And he also recognized that Jesus did not, that he's an innocent man, right? Right? And he turned to him and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Understand that Jesus is going to come into his kingdom. We even pray for such a thing. You know, um, uh, may your will be done on earth. Uh, no, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His, his, his kingdom is coming. And he will rule over everything. And we want to be part of that eternal kingdom. And so, uh, which by the way, back to the Israel thing, is called the New Jerusalem in Revelation. It's going to be in Israel, in Jerusalem, and it's going to be heaven come to earth. His kingdom come, his will be, will be done. We want to be a part of that. And so he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He recognized that this isn't the end. There's, there's something after this life. I'm gonna, he knows I'm going to die right now, pretty much, but there's something after this. And I know this man has the power and the keys to that, and I'm going to trust in him. That's what the thief on the cross. So you got, you got an unbelieving thief. you got a believing thief that is in paradise that day with Jesus who gets saved. The other one is going to go to hell, obviously, for being an unbeliever. What's the difference between the two of them? Really, what's the difference? Here's the difference. They both saw, well, it's not a different, here's the similarity, I should say. They both saw exactly the same thing. They're both crucified, and here they see Jesus come and carrying his cross up there. They see him as everyone else did. Right? They Perhaps they knew about him a little bit from before that. Who knows? But the, the fact of the matter is they probably knew very little because they probably weren't crucified the very day they were caught. They were probably thieves in jail for quite a while before punished on the cross. And so they may have had very little knowledge of Jesus and the teachings and the, and the crowds and the apostles and all that stuff. And in fact, what we know about them is this much, because I don't want to add too much speculation. I don't want to add any. All we do know about the thieves is this much from scripture. They both witnessed Jesus and saw exactly the same event occur before their very face. They both knew that they're going to die. One just would not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the other did. 
Now, there'll be some who would make the claim that, well, the thief that believed was chosen and it was the end of his life. But nevertheless, he was chosen by God to believe he didn't really have any say in it. It was determined by God. Now, that theology is false. No, they both saw with their own eyes and they made a choice. And one chose faith. The other just chose skepticism, doubt, unbelief. The one who chose faith was justified by faith in that moment. And the Bible story from beginning to end is about justification by faith. It's by the grace of God for those who have faith in him receive the rewards, the salvation, the spiritual blessings in heavenly places, you know, Ephesians 1 verse 3, right? Those were determined by God from the beginning of time. What are the spiritual blessings that will be given to all those who become in Christ by faith, becoming believers? And those spiritual blessings are, are laid out in Ephesians 1 and in Romans 8 as well. And, and so this is what is guaranteed for every single believer. And believe me, all want to be on that side of the equation. You don't want to be like the unbelieving thief and see what's coming in the end because everyone's going to the afterlife. And this life is a test. And so that's it. That's what I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to, the connection I wanted to make. And I wish everyone a very happy weekend, a happy Resurrection Day on Sunday. And may the, may the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you all now and forever. Amen. Bye-bye.